Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the amphibious command ship LCC, the flagship of the United States Navy fleets. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, fact one, only two ships. The amphibious command ship is a very large warship that can hold thousands of people. And in this type of ship, there's only one class of it, called the Blue Ridge class. And within the Blue Ridge class, there's only two active ships. There's the USS Blue Ridge, the LCC-19, and the USS Mount Whitney, the LCC-20. There's only two ships in this one class of amphibious command ship. It is incredibly interesting, but pretty logical because these ships have deviated from their original intent and as a result, it doesn't make sense for the United States Navy to build many of these. And also, because these are very, very large warships and they're not usually used for attack but more for command, it doesn't make sense to have a lot of them. And so there's only two of these ships in the whole class. Alright, fact two, the oldest deployed ships. As I mentioned, there's only two ships, the USS Blue Ridge and the USS Mount Whitney. The USS Blue Ridge is the first of this class, the lead ship of the Blue Ridge class. It was actually deployed in 1969 and commissioned in 1970. And so it has been in service for over 50 years now. Again, because these ships are very light armed and really possess only electronic surveillance equipment for command and control, it makes sense for them to continue floating if they can. These ships don't need to be super fast, super agile, or possess any kind of special abilities because it's essentially a floating command center, a floating headquarter for the respective fleets that they command. Think of this ship as more of a floating administrative center while out at sea. Admirals or high-ranking officers will probably use this ship as their base because other ships are designated for specific purposes and they probably don't want to interrupt, for example, aircraft operations or mission-critical enlisted members. These large warships probably provide more creature comfort and space for those admirals. Alright, fact 3, serving as flagships. Despite the fact that they're old and don't have too much capability except for C4ISR, which is command, control, surveillance, and so forth, they're actually the flagships of the two different fleets. The USS Blue Ridge is the flagship of the 7th Fleet, and the USS Mount Whitney is the flagship of the 6th Fleet. You can see these ships are actually sort of the symbol of these respective fleets, the 6th fleet and the 7th fleet. So when an admiral deploys and they need to get out in the sea, they will use this ship to serve as the flagship. And this is where it's similar to a game of chess or other kind of engagements where the most important high-ranking officers that need to get out with the carrier battle group, this is where they would stay. And this is where the battle group would actually get its information and command. So essentially, these amphibious command ships actually control the aircraft carriers, destroyers, frigates, and so forth. Because this is the ship that the officers and the admirals are directing everybody else. And so despite the fact that it's lightly armed, it is actually the most critical part because it's the entire decision making of the fleet. Alright, fact 4 mostly advanced electronics. As I mentioned in the previous sections, these flagships are serving as the military command while out in the battlefields. And so, as a result, they're mostly sophisticated command control, communications, and computer intelligence in the ships. And it makes sense that this ship is only armed with electronic information gathering systems. Because again, it's these ships that are directing where the aircraft carriers should go, where the frigates should go, where the destroyers should fire their cruise missiles. This is the most important ship and needs all the information possible from the battlefield 
so they can protect the other ships in the group. If this ship is missing its heavy electronics and surveillance equipment, it cannot make informed decisions on how to direct the carrier battle group, and it might lead them into harm's way. By having the most sophisticated electronic information awareness systems possible, the admirals and the high-ranking officers on this ship will be able to quickly determine what is the best way and most effective way to use their resources, and also to direct where the frigates or the aircraft carrier should go to avoid any potential conflicts or disasters. Therefore, for these ships, the most critical thing is the latest information. All right, let's get into the next and final fact. Fact five, originally four invasions. As I mentioned in previous sections, this ship was not intended to be a flagship of the 6th or 7th fleet. It was actually originally built over 50 years ago to conduct large-scale amphibious invasions. That's right, the United States Navy wanted to use this ship to ferry thousands of soldiers to land on a beachhead somewhere. As you can imagine, it is getting more and more unlikely for the United States to participate in such a large-scale invasion type scenarios. Conflicts these days are really directed at tactical targets in specific areas. And generally, you would use missiles and aircrafts to first destroy the enemy before you risk lives of soldiers to land on a beachhead. And so as a result, they fully converted the purpose of this ship to be a flagship command center for the strike groups that are traveling around the world. This ship is pretty much the brains of the carrier strike groups and directing where everyone should go and where to attack and where to look. It is the decision-making ship of the carrier strike group. All right, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.